So first let's have a look at the current model. So this is a typical elevator inside a concrete shaft building and um, yeah what we want to do is we want to replace the concrete shaft by a steel shaft construction and what I would like to do first is to prepare the shaft so I go into the group and shaft configurator and add a little bit the materials so I go to the material configuration I go to uh, floor levels and we see that we have classic material and what I use choose here is to have on all floors the same material and I choose a concrete the row and the material is 350 and I also choose create building floor levels so what we what we see in the background is that that we now have these uh, concrete materials here not sure whether this is uh, the right process for everything but let's go ahead and complete that so what else can we do we can go uh, to the shaft walls and we select all these elements and choose weak hole and weak hole removes weak hole removes the um, the walls um, this is much easier than creating a wall opening on each side so this is a new feature in 20 uh, this this feature came with 2016 so have a let's have a look at the 3d view uh, and then we see that um, then we can see that we now have uh, building floors and we have um, the elevator so now now is the next step is that we want to load we let me save that project first so the next step is that we want to load a CAD model to load the CAD model we choose the shaft because this is, will be the basis point at the end and I load the CAD model from um, from the new function CAD file load and then I choose the CAD file which is the steel frame IIM file and what we can see in the background that the model has been loaded but maybe it's the wrong direction but no problem because in the next step we can easily uh, arrange that so we rotate by the red twice three times by the red uh, button and that looks now much much better even that the um, location is wrong it looks it looks pretty good and I have tested this before so I have to put uh, some numbers here usually you can use a rule or better you define a better base point in uh, Autodesk Inventor but I tested that with uh, before I made this video so I simply fill the values here it's 989 9, and that should look um, pretty good now okay so now the the steel frame is in place and what we see here now is that we have a 3D model inside lift designer with a steel frame inside so this is really a perfect uh, example what I see is that um, probably the direction of the steel frame is wrong I'm not sure how this is built but uh, the basic concept does not um, will not um, change okay let me let me fix that as well so uh, what we need to do is we, we we choose that we go on edit we go ahead and maybe I did it wrong so we have to rotate that by the blue two times and then the dimensions are again wrong but I will show you uh, how we can how we can fix that now so um, So let's choose that and if you view the properties you see that this is the position so let me put a zero here so what we need to do is we need to move it um, <coughs> we can move this part now by equations and parameter 10 is the shaft width so I can put it to parameter 10 and um, let me fix that by 
approximately this distance from here to here it's not exactly it's 495 and the y direction is uh, still correct so if we view in the 3d view that looks now pretty good and um, if you view the other pages you see that this result is now visible on all all your drawing template pages even some things need to be fixed uh, it looks pretty good and it's exactly according to this so the next step I want to explain is, is what happens if a dimensional change happens so let's choose the car and when you let it make extreme here so let's say say the car width changes to 1600 this will update the model but what you see is that the seal shaft is still wrong and what you can do is you can map you can map lift designer parameters to inventor parameters in case uh, this inventor model is driven by an excel file and this is the case for this steel shaft so I can go on edit mapping and I need to select the mapping file so I choose the parameter sheet and in the next step I can assign parameters from lift designer to this model I did this for some parts already uh, and this will create an LD sheet with uh, the main uh, rules but I want to show you for the hoist way width and wall to wall distance which is the hoist way depth how that works so you simply go on any on your sheet and you can choose from lift designer the parameter so this is the hoist way width so we go to the width hoist way width parameter and this will automatically fill the related parameter here and assign it properly and the same for the hoist way depth which is shaft dot depth and this is all what you need to do in the next step you can control what you have assigned I already did it for the lift travel head and pit and the bracket count and so by clicking on update the model gets opened in Autodesk Inventor and you can see that the model gets updated on the right side in Inventor and the file is stored and updated within lift designer let's try it once again just to because it was so funny to see that when we change a value um, it's immediately updated according to this um, uh, to the settings and the mappings so let's update again you see how quick that works so it's not a <coughs> an operation that takes too long so for contract specific changes this is the right procedure and the updated model becomes visible in all sections so you don't have to leave lift designer and um, you don't have to make manual changes in AutoCAD or whatever so this is a real improvement uh, in lift designer 2017